Third quarter GDP in South Africa showing that the economy grew by 0.9%. South Africa officially out of a recession. We know the manufacturing and construction added some support. Mining, however, uh, um, really uh, disappointing um, the uh, uh, investor community out there, but not really much of a surprise. Do you think that we can sustain positive growth in South Africa? Well, it's the same situation we're seeing in the US. Uh, we're seeing a slight turnaround in numbers. Um, and, that's, and that can be of one or two reasons. I mean, either you've got inventories that have, that have been drawn down to zero now, and you've got slow basis of manufacturing again coming back into the equation. And I mean, that's true on the mining front and, and, and for, you know, for, the, you know, for GDP as a, as a measure. And that's either going to happen and going to continue to grow, or alternatively, you're going to see a slowdown, and you're going to see a slump back into negative numbers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that, that's all in, all, in, all, in the, all in the way balance. And that's part of a recession, is that you don't really know exactly where the numbers are going to go in the next quarter. And one has to ask oneself, you know, how important is that really? Well, it's interesting because we've been pricing in, of course, growth going forward from here and it's really being reflected in equity markets. What's the relationship been between equities and GDP figure? Well, there's, there's, it's not really correlated because if you look at the two measures, the one is backward looking. GDP tells you about the past. It tells you about what has happened in different sectors of the economy and you aggregate that to get to a gross domestic product mm -hmm. um, and you're looking, you're looking backwards. Whereas markets are forward looking. Markets are trying to anticipate what will happen in the, for, in the, in the future. And because that is the case, uh, you, you sit in a situation uh, whereby you've got markets that are very uncorrelated to what happens in, with, with GDP numbers. Well, taking a look at what happened at uh, during 1977, 1979, uh, market did quite well in anticipation that, uh, of course, things would turn in 1980. I mean, the interesting thing is that you came through a, you came through a very deep recession, and uh, GDP were as GDP fell, you had markets that were that were falling as well. And then in 1977, you had this this complete reverse. Mm -hmm. You had GDP still negative, but you had markets starting to anticipate that things will start getting better. And that really is the case through 77 and 78 and 79. And you had anemic uh, GDP growth, but markets were hugely up. And then in 1980, the whole thing actually comes to foreground, where GDP mm -hmm. growth thing starts uh, starts being realised, and uh, you've got this massive growth. And that's that's just a classic example. And I mean. You know, his, from a histori historical perspective, it's, it's littered with those kind of examples where you've got GDP that is negative and markets mm -hmm. that are positive. And 2009 will be another example of that, where you've got GDP for the year that is in negative territory, but you've actually got a positive number for a, for, for a market. What if too much growth has been priced in? Does that not leave uh, the market vulnerable? Then, you leave, then you're left with a flat market. Unless, you've, unless you sit in a situation where, um, where you've got unforeseen news that, that, that hits the market, such as a terrorist attack, where you've got something that happens that nobody has forecasted. But generally speaking, when you've had a period that we've just gone through, where you've had this massive clearing out of the system, um, you know, everything has kind of, you've, you've seen the bare bones of the industry um, worldwide, and you've seen a clearing out of, uh, of, 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 of those assets which are, which are dubious. Mm -hmm. um, when one has to ask oneself, what, what is the chances of more of those assets coming to the foreground? Okay, interesting to note that some of the investors out there say that we could be heading back into recession in mid-2010. Others say that that's very unlikely and it all depends on whether stimulus on a global level is withdrawn at that time and perhaps the economies of the world won't be ready for that kind of withdrawal. Where do you stand on this? Do you well, think that that is perhaps a bit of a bearish view? I think it is a bearish view. I think, you know, predominantly the, Fed the Federal Reserve has been, has been very vocal about trying to keep the stimulus going for as long as they possibly can. Um, and that means until unemployment drops, GDP numbers start showing positive, good, decent positive numbers, and they start seeing inflation building in the economy. And that, that they're prepared to keep going for, for long periods of time. And I think that's not only been the, the, the response in the US, but it's been the response in the UK and across the, the rest of the Western countries. And the South Africa response, you know, has been to, you know, for, for a budget deficit that, we, that, that we've got at the moment is to finance that as well. So that's been a response here as well. So I think, it is a, I think it's a, a fairly pessimistic view. Of, of the world from these levels. Okay, Kobe, when you take a look at the earnings that we've been seeing, because really a mixed bag of earnings, but most of the companies out there saying things are still tough and things will still remain tough are going ahead. So the earnings are not really matching up to the kind of rises that we've been seeing on the equity front. Could you explain that uh, that decoupling between earnings and equities? Well, let's, 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 let's just look at this factor here quickly. Mostly, most earnings are, again, backward looking. So most earnings will tell you what happened in the last six months and 12 months. And it's understandable that your earnings, if you look backwards, it's going to be bad relative to what its prognosis potentially can be going forward. Most companies are fairly 
fairly, uh, fairly, fairly reserved when they come to outlooks. Um, it's predominantly because the analyst community keeps them at their word, and if things don't uh, don't happen in the way that it's supposed to happen, the company gets punished hugely. So a lot of people sit down and say, look, let's be conservative about this. Um, so again, if you look at earnings and, and markets, the one's backward looking and the other one's forward looking, and the one's trying to price in what potentially could be the situation in the earnings front going forward. The interesting thing is if the earnings start surprising on the upside, on a, on a half yearly basis, we don't have to report on a quarterly basis in this country. But if they start surprising on, the, on a half yearly basis and, and everything starts turning around, you'll see just markets appraising and going higher. If they stay the same, if they slightly worsen or stay the same, markets will stay flat. Maybe you see a 5 10% drop down in the market, but you're not going to see a 40% drop down in the market because that was just unrealistic for the market. Third quarter GDP out of the US uh, yesterday as well, showing a revised number of growth of 2.8% and slightly worse than uh, the previous reading of 3.5%. Mm. Uh, Kirby, when you look at growth levels and the likes of the U Europe and, of course, the US, we know that it's, it's mostly because of the stimulus. And one of the big concerns is if we do see the withdrawal of all the stimulus, then the consumer will not be able uh, to... Uh, ensure that growth levels are kept and maintained at those levels. Look, the US economy, I think, is an interesting space. They're trying to find a new niche. Um, you know, consumerism drove that economy for the last two decades at least. Um, and that has to now start changing. So the question is, what do they do in order to, you know, to make sure the GDP can grow and that they foster an economy that is far more well balanced than just based upon consumerism? Um, those are all issues that I think they're grappling with and that they're trying to deal, to, trying, trying to deal with. In the meantime, you've got the benefit that you've got a stimulus and that you have the benefit that you have an economy or a government that can bail out because of the vast cash resources that they have and the financial tools that are available, available to them. At some point, this amount of stimulus cannot, cannot, cannot end in nothing. It can't end in the consumer not spending. It can't end in nothing happening. Something has to happen. You push money into a system, inflation has to build at some point.